What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing another market update looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today that I made a very small profit on, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on in this video. But before we do, for all you new viewers out there watching my channel for the first time, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be a part of a very tight-knit community, very helpful community, feel free to join that Discord group chat, guys. We're talking on a day-to-day -day basis about trading and investing, stocks, news, strategies, and just networking with each other to become the best possible traders and investors that we all can. So it's a very helpful community, guys, and if you want to be a part of it, again, all of those links are down below in the description box. So before we do talk about, you know, what I traded today and some other ETFs and stocks that I'm watching, you know, heading on, you know, for tomorrow and, you know, the rest of this month, Let's talk about what happened today in the overall, you know, stock market judging off of a technical perspective. So, you know, it was a pretty flat day today in terms of the overall markets. You know, the Dow Jones closed up 70 points today, up about 0.3%. The S&P closed red at about minus 53 cents. And, you know, the NASDAQ, where's the NASDAQ? It closed down about $11. And again, this is a NASDAQ future, but, you know, it did close down about $11, $10, So not crazy movement in terms of the overall markets. And let's look a little bit deeper into this. So for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday, I was talking about this 50 simple moving average resistance on the 20 day one hour chart pretty much for the Dow and the S&P. And we can see here it had trouble breaking above this uh, pretty much all day today. This acted as a resistance yesterday for the latter half of the market yesterday because for those of you all that were paying attention we had a pretty strong push early on yesterday and we can see that here on the five day five minute right really strong push and then we got rejected at that uh, 50 SMA on the 20 day one hour chart pretty much right here in the middle of the trading day and then we downtrended for the rest of the day and what happened today guys pretty much we were getting rejected by that same resistance and we kind of pushed down for the rest of the day popping up a little bit you know at the end of the last about hour hour and a half of the market to close the day green for the Dow Jones so is this a complete break of pattern guys uh, you know, it's not really technically a complete break of pattern quite yet, and I'm going to show you guys here why. So let me just quickly, uh, actually, we don't really have to delete anything here, but we can see, remember yesterday I was talking about how, uh, you know, the Dow is on a higher, high, higher, low pattern based off the past three days, and uh, today we pretty much just had a consolidation day, and that doesn't necessarily mean a break of pattern. All this means is that, you know, we need a day of consolidation before the Dow is going to decide to either pop up here or get rejected and further push down, which would actually indicate a break of that pattern, right? So, you know, if we were able to pop up tomorrow and maybe test this next resistance at the 180 SMA, that pattern of, you know, higher highs, higher lows is still going to be valid because this right here is technically a higher low from this previous. So that is exactly why the pattern Pattern, right is still intact but you know if we do like I said break below here and then break this support here at about 24 350 that is going to be a break of pattern and we could potentially be testing the lows here which would be the next support that we would break beneath of which is right around twenty four thousand dollars flat for the Dow Jones so what to keep an eye on guys for tomorrow is to see are we going to hold above here are we going to break out of this little you know 50 uh 
SMA resistance that we do see right now. And are we going to head up to here to the next resistance? Or are we going to break that pattern and head towards this next support on the Dow Jones at about $24,300, which is about 200 points lower from where we are right now at the close of the day. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the Dow Jones. Very similar situation with the S&P 500, guys. We noticed that this one was getting rejected pretty much all day today by this 20 simple moving or this 50 simple moving average on the 20 day one hour chart. We can see it right here very clearly, right? But again, just like the Dow Jones guys, this one is on an uptrending higher high, higher low pattern over the past couple of days. And that trend is still valid because we are technically at a higher low from the previous low. So what we'd want to see, right, for a break of this pattern is we would want to see a break below this next support at about 2620, which is about 25 points lower than uh, pretty much where we closed today. So a break of pattern here would be a break below here. And again, obviously a continuation of pattern would be this next uh, 180 SMA resistance if we tried to make a climb back up to there, which would be another higher high from the previous. And again, that's a continuation of the pattern. So the Dow and the S&P guys, very similar in terms of technicals and just keep an eye on this resistance point right here. And, uh, you know, in terms of the 184 hour chart, guys, you know, we're still holding above this uh, support at about. 2630 that I've been talking about over the past couple of weeks in every single video. You know, we've been talking about how the S&P is trading in more of a horizontal channel, right? With a support at about 2630 and a resistance at about 2800-ish, rather than, you know, the downwards trending channel that the Dow Jones is trading in. But this is actually holding this support now that I think about it, you know, over the past couple of days. But again, remember a couple days back when I made that video called uh, the Dow Jones breaks a critical support that was here when we dipped below and made a lower low here so you know technically we did break the pattern but now that we're popping up and holding above it again you know that could have just been a brief dip below and uh, you know we're still holding that support so technically right now guys we're back at that support level and what we'd want to see for a continuation of a downtrend in the Dow Jones is obviously like I said getting rejected by that 50 SMA and continuing to, you know, pretty much get to this support level on this channel, which would be a lower low based off that low we hit two days ago when I made that video called the Dow Jones breaks a critical support level. If you guys didn't catch that video, go check it out. I think it's like three, four videos before this one. And, uh, you know, that is what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones. You know, in every single video, guys, I talk about the overall markets to begin the video just to get a better understanding understanding of what's going on in the macro aspect of the you know of the stock market right just think about it like economics right we have macroeconomics the whole entire country and then we have microeconomics which would be you know smaller businesses you know the states right you know separate entities within the macro uh, economics, right? Think about think about it that way, right? The macro would be the indexes, right? And then the micro would be the stocks within those indexes. It's a very you know uh, similar correlation in my personal opinion and you know understanding what's going on in the macro would give you a better understanding and idea of what to trade in terms of the micro meaning the stocks and the ETFs that we look at in terms of you know the stock market on a day-to-day -day basis so that's a cool way to think about it if that helps you you know see it in a different perspective right so you know Dow Jones S&P following pretty much the same patterns and you know that's what we're looking at in terms of those two major indexes and you know the Nasdaq guys we're getting rejected by that 180 SMA which again has been a resistance in the past and that's pretty much valid right now since we did close the day red and again this is a future it's down about 20 points right now when I started the video it was down about 11 points so you know even heading into after hours right now we're getting rejected even more by this 180 simple moving average. So keep an eye here, guys. You know, we are holding above the support here technically. But, you know, if we do start to push back down here, keep an eye on that support. And, uh, you know, that would be the next point where we would want to see the NASDAQ bounce or break beneath of to continue this uh, lower low downtrending pattern that it's been in. But also, guys, on the flip side, 
Keep an eye whether or not we're going to maybe pop out of here and, you know, break out of this resistance because that is also possible because that's what happened on the previous move that we saw here a couple of weeks back. So keep an eye on this, guys. Again, you know, Apple has a very huge uh, uh, weight on the NASDAQ. So keep an eye on Apple. Keep an eye on the NASDAQ because, you know, if Apple has a really bad red day, you know, odds are that the NASDAQ is going to be getting crushed. And we do notice that since Apple has fallen, Fallen from 230 all the way down to 170. That's dragged down the NASDAQ further than the previous indexes. Although Apple is in those indexes as well, you know, it's just worth keeping an eye on the NASDAQ because it's gotten hurt the most, right? From where it's at right now up to the peak, guys, we're down almost 14, 15 percent. And what constitutes a bear market is when an index is down 19 to 20 plus percent from the peak of, you know, uh, of that index pretty much, right? So we're down 14% from the peak here. And, you know, the Dow Jones, guys, it's down about 9%, 10% from where we are right now from the peak, right? You can see it there, 9%, 10%. And I believe the S&P is the same, maybe 8% if we're being precise. Actually, no, it's roughly the same, about 9%, 10% down from the peak. So technically, we're in a correction in terms of the uh, all these indexes, but the NASDAQ is a little bit further down in terms of percentage, roughly about 14, 15% compared to the S&P and the Dow, which is about 10, 11% uh, respectively, right? So that's what we're looking at here in terms of, you know, all these different indexes. And let's talk about what I traded today very quickly before we talk about some other ETFs and stocks that were heavily talked about in the group today. And I got a request to talk about UWT. And we're going to talk about that one because we had a very strong day in UWT and a bunch of people in the group did very, very well on that one. And, you know, that's why we're going to get into it. But, you know, I traded TVIX today. I'm sure you guys might have been able to guess that. But this is one that I took a loss on yesterday. I believe it was about a 2% loss, right? I hopped in a little bit too, uh, you know, a little bit too late and then ended up, it ended up going down pretty much once I hopped in. And, you know, it hit my stop loss. And that was pretty much it for me on the day yesterday for trading. You know, I took a little loss after taking a couple green days in a row and you know that's what happened and today and today I took about a 1% gain I believe on TVIX and we're going to see exactly where I ended up taking this position so we noticed that TVIX sold off pretty heavily to begin the day at about 48.50 it sold off to and then we started to see some higher highs uh, higher low action starting to pop up and this was obviously because the S&P which is the main index that TVIX tracks was doing that as well well, but on the inverse, right? Because TVIX goes up when the markets go down. And since this was, you know, making lower lows, uh, lower highs, obviously TVIX was up trending in price. So I was able to get into TVIX today initially at about $50.55. I believe I got in right around here actually you know similar situation as yesterday i got in at the top but once we started to pull back and i noticed that we were holding above this 180 sma right i ended up putting more money into tvix down here and remember guys i'm always you know scaling into my positions for the most part right you know i take about two three positions right meaning that i split it up into two three you know different you know buying up buying times right pretty much for each trade you know sometimes i'm taking four or five positions if it's a longer term you know swing trade but when i'm day trading guys i mostly do about two to three different entry points so i initially got in at about 55 or uh, 50 dollars and 55 cents or 50 50 something like that right i talked about that in the group chat and then we pulled back Back here and as I noticed that we were holding above here on the 180 SMA and we were making a lower uh, you know a higher low from the previous I actually ended up adding more money I think as we broke above this 50 SMA at about fifty dollars and twenty five cents so my average position at this point was right around like fifty dollars and I believe like forty cents or something like that and you know I ended up selling off at the at about fifty one dollars and twenty five ish cents so I made about one two percent on this one right guys about one point five 
have 1.6%. And, you know, that pretty much almost negated my loss uh, from yesterday on TVIX because, again, for those of you guys that didn't watch yesterday's video, and if you didn't, I highly advise you to go watch that. I took a 2% loss on TVIX, and I can show you guys, again, very quickly for, you new, for the new viewers out there where I took that loss. It was pretty much here. I got in at about $50.50, and then I ended up just stopping out right as we got to about you know two percent down from this from this range right I forget how how far two percent down is but that's where I ended up cutting my losses and you know that puts us right at below the one uh, the 50 SMA here on the five hour or the five day five minute chart so that's where I took my losses yesterday again I almost negated those today with about a 1.5 gain on TVIX and uh you know, that's pretty much it for my trading today, guys. Again, I'm, I'm a very simple guy when it comes to trading. I don't take a ton of positions every single day. I'm not, you know, taking 10, 15 trades every single day. You know, obviously some days there's going to be more trading than other days. Some days there's not going to be trading at all. And today was one of those days where I, I, I traded more on a minimal basis. So that is what happened in terms of my trading uh, today. TVIX 1.5% percent day so let's go over some other ones that did very very well today one of them being uh what was it d gas d gas had a fantastic day today yet again and we can see that here on the one day one minute so the closing price of d gas doesn't really do it justice because we see here 0.8 uh 0.8 dollars uh, lost on the day down about 1.24 percent but what we don't what we don't get from uh you know that is that we had a, a very big swing of about 15 percent from the bottom of the day and pretty much guys on a technical basis d gas played absolutely phenomenal today and i'm going to explain to you guys why so from yesterday's high at about $66 after was that after market no this was pre market hours uh you know we dipped all the way down to $57 which opened up a very big gap a very big margin of profit so you know i didn't trade dgas today but i'm sure a bunch of the traders today that did trade dgas saw exactly what i'm talking about here and pretty much this was a trade that filled that entire pre market after market hour gap that we just talked about of 13 to 15 percent so on a technical basis guys very beautiful trade in terms of uh or very beautiful uh you know chart in terms of degas because again we opened up a very big margin of profit here heading into the market and honestly this is one that i should have capitalized on i should have i should have saw this one but but again you know shoulda coulda woulda excuses you know all that but i didn't get into it but on a technical basis a beautiful beautiful trade here so you know all you guys that traded DGAS, shout out to you. Very, very good job. And, you know, technically, this one's still on this uptrending pattern. So let's see what happens tomorrow, guys. You know, natural gas seems like it's not in that bullish state anymore. You know, we obviously got the report today, which tanked down natural gas from this point here at about 428 all the way down to 410 range. And it's been hovering at that support for the past couple of hours, right? And that's a very strong support here on natural gas. So keep an eye, guys. If this one does get rejected here and starts to push down to that support, and if it eventually breaks that support, that's going to be an absolutely phenomenal sign to go on DGAS again. And DGAS might even be continuing the uptrend pattern that it's on if this does end up happening. And judging off this 180 chart here really quickly on uh, natural gas, we are breaking below this 180 simple moving average uh, support pretty much, you know, pretty strongly right here, guys. We noticed we took the dip, we popped up, you know, got rejected by the 50 SMA, and now we're pushing back down. So, you know, the technicals are pointing towards natural gas being, you know, selling off pretty much, right? Which, again, is very good for DGAS. Another one that did very well today was UWT, and this is a crude oil-based ETF, meaning that it follows crude oil. So for those of you guys that have been paying attention to crude oil in general, we've been getting hammered in terms of crude oil. I believe it's taken the biggest loss that it's seen in years. I know there's a statistic about this. I don't know it off the top of my head, but the loss that we've seen in crude oil has been one of the biggest losses that we've seen in crude oil 
in a matter of a couple of years. So, you know, read up on that and, you know, keep an eye on crude oil in general. But we can see exactly what I'm talking about here, guys. We were Crude oil is at $77 and we sold off all the way to $49. So 33% sell off. That's absolutely crazy, right? So, you know, why a lot of people traded UWT today was due to the fact that Crude oil itself has been on the strong support, very strong support, pretty much for the past three trading weeks, right? We can see it here, 11.23, that was about three weeks ago, we held that support very nicely. So the fact that we're holding this support is a good sign that CL crude oil is either going to pump up, right? Or it's going to continue this downwards trending move. So the reason why UWT did very well today, guys, because this one bounced very nicely off the support and had a strong 3% day pretty much off that support level. And now we're up to that resistance point at about $53 on crude oil. So let's see how that correlated here over to UWT, which is again, uh, uh, an inverse ETF that goes up when crude oil goes up in price. So we notice UWT has been getting crushed from the highs of $51 all the way down to $12. So we had an 11% day to day up $1 and 44 cents. And this is actually one that I'm very, very interested in trading tomorrow and heading on to the rest of this week. Because again, if crude oil is at a very strong uh, support right now, and if it continues to push up and if it continues to break those uh actually not continue to break if it breaks that resistance right because again if we look at crude oil we're at a resistance right now judging off this past uh 20 day chart here we're at a resistance we're near one at about 53 dollars and you know especially if we break above 54 dollars guys that's going to be a very very good long play in my personal opinion uh maybe like a weak swing trade potentially especially a day trade if you guys are more uh you know you want to get in and out of these inverse etfs but you know again they're not really meant to hold for more than a couple of days or one day but since it's fallen so much, guys, there could be some pretty high potential in terms of margin on UWT if we are able to break out of here and if crude oil is able to break that resistance. So keep an eye on that, guys. Very, very important in my personal opinion. So not too much movement, you know, besides the UGAS, the DGAS today, uh, UWT and its inverse DWT were obviously moving in opposite directions, but they had big moves today. And, you know, TVIX had a decent move today as well. So, um, you know, what am I watching tomorrow, guys? Tomorrow, I'm going to be watching actually DWT to see if we do get rejected by here. You know, if we do get rejected here near this resistance on UWT, guys, DWT could be a potential bounce back play tomorrow. But again, if we do break out of here, if crude oil continues to push up, obviously, this is going to be another good trade, which is UWT. So the whole idea here is to watch pre-market hours, see what's happening to see whether or not we're going to be trading UWT or DWT. So crude oil, I believe you can see this price um, pretty much all day. I believe it closes at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or something like that. And then it opens up super early in the a.m. So in the morning, guys, see what crude oil is doing. Is, is crude oil continuing to push up? Is it showing a sign of weakness or resistance? Is it curling back down to head back to the support? That's going to pretty much just dictate what we're going to be trading in terms of UWT or DWT tomorrow. So Facebook is another one that's at an interesting spot right now. Now, we talked about this one in yesterday's video, and we're actually breaking above the 180 SMA now, and you know, we're treating it as a support level rather than a resistance. So, this could finally be the reversal point in Facebook stock, judging off of a technical perspective. So, next resistance on Facebook, guys, if it breaks the 150 level right? If it breaks this level, that is a complete break of this downwards trending pattern. So keep an eye on Facebook. If we bounce here and start heading to the 150 level, that's a very strong reversal sign that Facebook is heading back up to the next resistance and then in the next resistance and then the next resistance and eventually all the way back up to $200. If that is where, you know, 
the technicals are, t are pointing and telling us that it's going, right? So that's it for today's video, guys. Not too much uh, crazy movement in terms of my watch list. Obviously, I trade a bunch of the same stocks, ETFs, every single day, and I'm going to be sticking to those as long as I'm consecu or not consecutively, consistently profitable with them, which I have been. So tomorrow, I'm watching UWT and DWT very closely, UGAS and DGAS, TVIX. If we do see a sell-off tomorrow, TVIX is going to be absolutely great. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.